You're watching Iowa High School girls soccer on the Central Iowa Sports Network. Two of the top programs in the state collide under the lights here at Valley Stadium as the Valley Tigers square off against the Wolves of Waukee Northwest. And hello, soccer fans. Delighted to have you with us here on this Tuesday evening from West Des Moines on CISN. TV. Alongside our crew here tonight, I'm Hunter Phillips, and marching into the third week of the girls' soccer campaign, we've got a marquee matchup as a pair of top five squads in Class 3A meet on the pitch, number four, Valley, and number three, Waukee Northwest. Both programs enter the contest with an unblemished record, beginning with Waukee Northwest, now in its second season of competition. 4-0 to begin 2023, the Wolves' victories have come against top 10 opponents, Lenmar and Pleasant Valley in the Ankeny and Centennial Crosstown Soccer Invitational, a clean sheet 3-0 win at Muscatine, and the very next day topping number 9 Johnston, a team that passes the ball extremely well. 10 of Waukee Northwest, 12 goals this season have been assisted on, and among the players to watch out for tonight is senior Zoe Mahoney, the Wolves' leader in both goals and assist, but a tough task awaits them tonight in the fourth-ranked Valley Tigers, whose three victories have also been overranked opposition, beating Eastern Iowa stalwarts Bettendorf, Linmar, and Pleasant Valley. The Tigers have outscored its opponents 10 to 1 and bring back a wealth of experience from last season's team that advanced to the Class 3A semifinals. Junior Rachel Hansen leads Valley with four goals and nine points in total. So again, two of the top programs in the state clash for the very first time in series history, setting up for an absolute thriller here tonight. We'll step aside for a quick break. When we come back, we'll continue to get you set for kickoff here from Valley Stadium. This is Iowa High School Girls Soccer on CISN.TV. We are. We are. 
We are so much more than an energy company. We are connectors, community protectors, and clean energy leaders. We are job creators, friends and neighbors, stewards of your dollars and savings. Yes, we. We. We are so much more. We are the energy behind your everyday. And we are obsessively, relentlessly at your service. For 75 years, Holt Service Trucks have hit the streets of Central Iowa to help customers in need. It might be for plumbing, heating, cooling, a water heater, or the usual repairs and maintenance. We've done that with quality work from quality employees who bring passion and personality to the job. That's the whole difference. It gives me great pride to see how our company has grown from the seeds of success my grandfather planted in 1947. That's why more and more Central Iowans are saying, let Holt handle that. Welcome back here to Valley Stadium. It is Waukee Northwest and Valley, two top five teams in Class 3A, getting set to square off as the sun is slowly setting down here in West Des Moines. It's been an awfully beautiful start to the week here in early April. 74 degrees, our current temperature here in West Des Moines, but it is a bit breezy. The wind has picked up here in the afternoon hours and still here in the early evening, 22 uh, mile an hour winds right now as uh, most of the winds coming there out of the west right now and certainly going to be gusty here throughout the week but the temperatures continue to remain high so again two teams that are in the top five and in class 3a Ankeny Centennial Ankeny ranked one and two respectively Linmar rounding out the top five again the newest rankings will be established on Thursday but no doubt, one of the best matchups here in the early portion of this girls soccer campaign. These are two teams that made it to the state tournament last year and fell to eventual state champion Ankeny Centennial. And both of these teams will face Ankeny Centennial later on in the schedule. But tonight, it's about building early season momentum. Star power on both sides. We'll highlight it throughout the course of our broadcast here tonight. But two teams that are familiar in terms of the club soccer here around the Des Moines Metro, but now for their respective high schools, they will meet on the pitch here tonight. So again, a little bit of a breeze coming out of the West, but otherwise you couldn't ask for a better night of soccer here in central Iowa. So both teams are getting ready to head out for the starting lineups and then of course, we will turn into the national anthem here in West Des Moines. One of the many of top 10 matchups here on this Tuesday. Again, already into the third week of the 2023 campaign and two teams that are destined for play down at county meeting here early in the season. We'll take another quick break. When we come back, we'll get you again all set up for kickoff here in West Des Moines on CISN.TV. Number three, 
75 years, Holt Service Trucks have hit the streets of Central Iowa to help customers in need. It might be for plumbing, heating, cooling, a water heater, or the usual repairs and maintenance. We've done that with quality work from quality employees who bring passion and personality to the job. That's the whole difference. It gives me great pride to see how our company has grown from the seeds of success my grandfather planted in 1947. That's why more and more Central Iowans are saying, let Holt handle that. Do you know what the best part about being a dog is? You can hear disaster before it even happens. You know what they say about disaster. Sometimes it can inspire a symphony. An honest day's work deserves an honest day's treat. No extra charge. And that is why we choose honest wrenches. No extra charge. And it's how service should be. Hi, this is Chris from Fireplace Superstore, and you've probably noticed there's shortages on most everything in the market today. Well, Heat & Glow has helped us out this year, and they are focusing their energy on their gas fireplace inserts. So if you've got a drafty old wood-burning fireplace, and you want to get it retrofitted into a beautiful, high-efficient gas fireplace, come see us. We will have product to sell you. Heat & Glow gas fireplace insert from Fireplace Superstore, 109th and Douglas in Urbandale, just west of Homemakers. It's Waukee Northwest and Valley, number three versus number four here in this early season clash. West side rivalry in the CIML. Hunter Phillips along with our crew. Delighted to have you with us here on the Central Iowa Sports Network. Both teams coming in with an unbeaten record. Waukee Northwest at 4-0, while the Valley Tigers are 3-0. All of the wins for both of these teams have come against top 10 competition. So something is going to have to give here on this Tuesday night from Valley Stadium. Again, an absolutely beautiful evening for soccer. Little breezy. Winds coming in out of the west at 12 miles an hour. See how that may play a role here tonight. Valley in their home black kits with orange numerals and lettering and white trim, while Waukee Northwest is in their road, all white kits with light blue numerals and lettering and trim. The first ever meeting between Waukee Northwest and Valley as we are underway. Two teams that bring in a lot of experience and even though Waukee Northwest is in its second season of competition, this is a well-bonded unit led by their head coach, Tony Gabriel. The back line being tested early for the Tigers. Waukee Northwest is a team that once they get the possession, they can pass the ball extremely well. This was a team that ranked third in class 3A in total assists last year, and they are right near the top in that category here in the early portion of this season. 
Handling it along the back line. Carly Boatman for Joaquin Northwest, but the Tigers quick to pounce on it. Anna Spain, first team All-State selection last year. Phenomenal multi-sport athlete. Part of the Valley Girls basketball team for the last few seasons. They made it to the state tournament. She will be playing her soccer collegiately at St. Cloud State. One of two Valley Tigers that will be taking their talents up to Minnesota. Waukee Northwest, they boast a lot of talent as well. We'll continue to go through it throughout the course of the night. Here is Spain. We'll send it to the near flank. Where it is collected by Elon Litt. Ava Hall. One of the youngsters, the very few youngsters that are on this Valley team. Led by its now 27th year head coach, Robert Chapman. Over 430 victories in his illustrious career at Valley. 19 state tournaments he has guided the Tigers to, including seven state championships. The most recent coming just a pair of years ago in 2021. That one will trickle to the end line. And it will be a goal kick upcoming for Waukee Northwest. And talking about the star power, both goalkeepers are some of the best that the state has to offer, including Victoria Spawn between the pipes for the Wolves tonight. A verbal commit for Missouri State. But the Tigers, who have outscored its opposition 10 to 1 here in its first three matches, they're going to be aggressive as well, really testing this defense, the back line of Waukee Northwest. Giving chase for it was Finley Rivera, one of two sophomores in the starting 11 for the Valley Tigers, well played and picked off. That was Natalie Gallagher, the senior. A throw in for Valley. Throwing it in is J.C. Lockie. But now the Wolves going back with Gallagher. Searching there in the center for Anna Coppola. Pass just a little too far ahead. Yeah, throw in for the Waukee Northwest Wolves. Arriving here at Valley Stadium with a 4-0 record, most recently topping number nine Johnston 2-1. A game in which the Wolves really had to hang on there towards the end. They were up 1-0 at half, but then Johnston, who at number nine, of course, had a big win against Ankeny earlier in the week, or last week I should say. They are a sneaky good team and that was one in which Coach Gabriel noted that to be able to walk away with a road win like that, super critical here in this early stage of the season. Macy Davis, Andy Lee Gallagher each scoring a goal in that 2-1 victory for the Wolves. Zoe Mahoney and Vanderkroll got the assist. So moving in closer for the throw in is Carly Boatman. Another thing that Waukee Northwest will like to try to take advantage of is their ability to be able to find teammates in the open creases of the formation on throw in attempts. Of course, their super senior, Zoe Mahoney, one of the best to do that amongst many other attributes there at the defender position. Leads the team in goals and assists. She has tallied a point in each of the matches this season for the Wolves. She will go back to spawn. They play just over 10 minutes here 
in this contest. Just getting underway. Ball sent forward by the Wolves. Spain. Again, first team All-State defender last year. Still containing the possession for the Tigers. That was all set up by number 25 to be able to keep things in front. Trying to work it to the center as Joaquin Northwest. Both teams have had a good look at possessions here evenly. And now here's a nice run from the left side. Still, the ball is free. But then the Tigers clear it out. Joaquin Northwest quick to take it back. And a little miscommunication there on that exchange. That'll allow a goal kick here for Lydia Anderson, the senior keeper for the Tigers. She's only given up the one goal this season. She is one of 10 seniors on this Valley team. A combined 16 upperclassmen for the Tigers who just seem to be able to reload and have that experience each and every season, making them a contender. On the other side of West Des Moines, out in Waukee, the Wolves looking to make a statement in year two. Building off a very successful opening campaign. Went 16-3 a year ago, falling to Ankeny Centennial in the quarterfinals of the 3A tournament. A little shove match there along the touchline. That will result in a corner kick here for Waukee Northwest. And it will be Zoe Mahoney. Tied for second in 3A in total points with 15. Lofts it up from the corner. Phenomenal footwork, Spain was unable to contain Joseph Jones. So Valley has been put to the test here early against Joaquin Northwest. Another corner kick here for the Wolves after that discussion from the officials. And so the wind will be at the back here for Zoe Mahoney. Mahoney sharply in. Cleared initially, ball still loose in front of the net. And Joaquin Northwest slips it past Anderson. And 15 minutes into the match, Joaquin Northwest strikes first. It was cleared initially, but it hung around the air, and a number of white shirts were there to be able to take advantage. Natalie Gallagher, like number two, was the one that will get credit for that goal, but boy, she had the help of many of her teammates. But then another assist unofficially given to Zoe Mahoney. Wolves looking for more here early. So again, like we talked about, the majority of the goals for Waukee Northwest this season have been assisted on. Now 13 of their goals this season, or excuse me, 11 of their 13 goals this season have come via an assist. And so for Gallagher, if that was in fact Her officially, that is her third goal of the season. Gallagher will be playing her collegiate soccer at Colorado State out in Fort Collins. She was a second team All-State selection last year as the Tigers will go to their bench. 
and they will bring in Megan Burton. A senior that does have a goal this season. Valuable player off the bench for Valley. Checking out is J.C. Lockie. So off a set piece, corner kick, 15 minutes into the match. Waukee Northwest not wasting any time to get on the scoreboard first. And now the Tigers, who have conceded now just their second goal of the season, how do they respond? Josie Vanderkroll, who, as we noted, had an assist in their win over Johnston. Last week for Waukee Northwest is set to check in at the next whistle. A misplay there, Elon Litt. Pushed ahead by Coppola. Spain has been awfully busy there along the right back. But now in Valley's half, it will result in a throw in for Waukee Northwest. And here's the aforementioned Josie Vanderkroll. Two assists and a goal this season. Is in for Carly Boatman. Sun continuing to slowly set here on a picture perfect night for soccer here in West Des Moines. The lights here at Valley Stadium will slowly coming on as well. Tigers, after being pinned there to the far flank, will now reverse course. Here with Elon Litt. The junior pushes it to the center for Valley. From the back, Finley Rivera. Now, after good ball movement, that sets things up for Zoe Fanter. Lofts up a shot that just goes wide left. But the Tigers letting Waukee Northwest know that they're not going to go down quietly and they're going to be able to respond. Fanter has the ability to be able to make big plays happen just like that. Fanter with two goals on the season for the Tigers, which came in their win against Bettendorf earlier in the year. Like Anna Spain, she too will take her talents to St. Cloud State. But now the Tigers have seemed to regroup after conceding an early goal. And they've been working right here. Here is Fanter. A pair of wolves surround the talented senior. Lit. It remains with the Tigers who are quick to get in position for a throw in. allow a substitution, I believe, come in for Valley, and that will be the case. So I beg your pardon, that was actually a Finley Rivera that checked in. Mallory Goldstein also out there for the Tigers. Olsen checks out for Valley. Continuing to put some heat on Waukee Northwest. Northwest will also bring in a sub. And that is Evelyn Levon Sr. Will be playing her college soccer at Grandview, just across town. Of course, the same college where her head coach, Tony Great Gabriel, played. Swirling back. Momentarily was Ava Hall for the Tigers. We put it back into Waukee Northwest half, but the Wolves will remain with it. So we talked about the strong start for Waukee Northwest in their most recent win against Johnston. Also defeated number eight Muscatine. 
clean sheet, their lone clean sheet here on the early season. And it also bested number five, Linmar, and number six, Pleasant Valley, up in Ankeny at the Ankeny and Centennial Crosstown Soccer Invitational. West Des Moines Valley also a part of that Invitational to start off the season. Valley trying to carve their way through. But that will give it back to Waukee Northwest. Seven seniors, seven juniors, two sophomores, and one freshman on the roster for the 4-0 Waukee Northwest Wolves. Who, strangely enough, not been at home all that often. In fact, their next home game will come on May 12th when they host Ankeny Centennial, the defending state champs. So they know how critical it is to, to be able to perform well here outside of their friendly confines. Mahoney. There is a foul away from the ball. And that will put Valley in very good position here. Just right at the 30-yard marker, a little bit above. So it sets up a free kick here for Valley. And it will be Mallory Goldstein with a sharp ball up to the front. But in the back of the box, the Wolves had the personnel to be able to match up with it. And now Waukee Northwest looking to counter Last five minutes or so, give or take. Then possession heavy for Valley. But it is Joaquin Northwest with the 1-0 lead here in this first half. So the Valley Tigers, on the other hand, 3-0. Last win was against number six, Pleasant Valley. That was a 4-0 win. Back. Nicely boxing out was Van der Levan. Nothing called there on the pitch. And the ball gets slipped past the back line of Joaquin Northwest, but Spawn is there. A lot of talk about Jasmine Moser and Ankeny, and rightfully so, as one of the top keepers here in the state, but Victoria Spawn has made a name for herself. Lydia Anderson coming up to collect it for Valley. So going back to Valley's last win against Pleasant Valley, outshot the Spartans 10 to two in that contest with four different Tigers notching a goal. So they spread the wealth in that particular night. Hoffa, Hansen, Burton, and Spain each with a goal piece. Looking to get one past Spawn to try to equalize this match. Setting up along the far side. Knocked away by Joaquin Northwest. J.C. Joaquin back in for Valley. Ava Stemmler in for the first time tonight. Meanwhile for Joaquin Northwest, Carly Boatman after a quick breather, she re-enters the match. So Joaquin will throw it in for the Tigers. Here as we have just over 20 minutes remaining here in this first half. Wolves play the throw in very nicely. But a good run from the back gives another opportunity to the Tigers. Players grid locked. And a foul on Valley. So 
Natalie Gallagher got the scoring started for Joaquin Northwest. And now the Tigers of Valley trying to answer. A crosser there to the middle. Ball still loose in front of the net. And there it is for the equalizing goal for the Tigers who just put too much pressure on Joaquin Northwest to tie this one up. Set up so nicely here on this breakaway. And there's another look at it right there, but it is an offside as you saw the official there in the center of your screen wave it off. Which it looked like, again, one of those bang bang plays there where it could have gone either way, but the official right on top of it. A tackle there, Valley hoping that it was going to result in a penalty, but not so fast. Well, Joaquin Northwest has been put on their heels here as of late. But fortunate that an offside was called. Otherwise the match would be all knotted at one. Mahoney was the first one to pass the head. Here's Natalie Gallagher. Still played there for the Wolves. Nice cut back. Nobody home for the Wolves, but in the midfield. Shot from about 20 feet, or 20 yards out rather. Goes off to the left. So that'll allow Samantha Elgis to come back into the match for Waukee Northwest. And Grace Olson, senior for Valley back in, still searching for her first goal of the season. So Waukee Northwest breathing a sigh of relief after a brief moment, Valley nodded things up at one. Ever since that goal in the 30th minute, the Tigers have kept their foot on the pedal. The Tigers being a little conscious about where they're positioning to make sure that they stay on side. Here is Lockie. Forced to give it up far side and the Wolves right there. Here with Mahoney. Tripped up and that will go against Ava Hall. So we talked a little bit about Natalie Gallagher. But how about the play from Zoe Mahoney who will stay here in Des Moines. Is committed to Drake. Play for head coach Lindsey Horner who played her high school soccer here at Valley. So a couple of years down the road, Mahoney and Victoria Spahn will go from being high school teammates to opponents at the next level in the Missouri Valley Conference, Drake and Missouri State. Of course, Valley has a Drake. A Valley alum is currently at Drake, and that is C.J. Johnson, a member of that 2021 championship team. Laid the foundation for what this squad has been able to do over the last season and a half. Two players in now for Waukee Northwest. Anna Coppola back in. And also Elena Stedding. Two seniors back in the fold for the Wolves. Was another ball on the pitch, so officials stop play for the housekeeping to allow the toss in for Elon Litt for Valley. Semi finalist last year, coming up just shy. 
against Ankeny Centennial. Bit of a redemption season, a revenge tour, if you will, for the Tigers. Grace Olson knocks that one out of play, but let's talk about the success here for Valley over the last few seasons. Since 2021, this team is 43 and two. Just an incredible run put forth by Valley. But the sport of soccer is continuing to grow here in central Iowa, spread out. Valley and its program has continued to have a firm grip on things here in the state. Milwaukee Northwest, they're a team that is on the rise. Then you nestle in both Ankeny Centennial and Ankeny, both ranked one and two in the latest Class 3A rankings. Johnston also a formidable team. Soccer only continuing to get better here in the Metro. Here's Elon Litt for Valley to Rachel Hansen. Anna Spain coming in from the back. Such a quick athlete and has tremendous footwork like you saw there. Spain continuing to fight for the Tigers. There is Spain once again. Trying to set it up right side. Good ball ahead. It will be a corner kick. Or no, I beg your pardon, it won't. So a close play there. Right along the end line and it results. And a goal kick here for Waukee Northwest. Got the momentum early, but the Tigers have been clawing back here. Good effort by Vandekroll to try to create a little pressure, but Valley will throw this one in. Valley, the lone loss last year coming to Ankeny Centennial, again in the semifinals, 19 and one a year ago, a team that was one of the top scoring teams in the state and lost a little bit of firepower from that team, including Anna Van Weingarten, who's now at Minnesota State, Mankato. One of the top goal scorers in the state. Brooklyn Buttoff also on that team as well. Grace Walford, those two players also taking their talents collegiately, but Valley has seen a number of players graduate, but have still been a strong team. Tigers controlling it at the center. Pushed ahead by Stimler. Shot hoisted by Litt. And that's just going left of the goal. Tigers continuing to utilize their bench as is Joaquin Northwest. Two in for Valley, one. And for the Wolves, it is. AC Davis, I believe, checking out for Waukee Northwest. The Wolves trying to counter, and that is how they were able to establish their first of two corner kicks, the second giving the Wolves their first goal on the night. Josie Vanderkroll. Good 1v1 action. Help defense there for Valley. Kalaw 
sliding of the feet there. Unable to control that pass was Lockie for Valley. Throw in for Samantha Elchis, the junior for Joaquin Northwest. Has an assist on the season. Here is Spain. Been the workhorse all season, and has certainly been that here tonight. On the far flank, Valley. Trying to find an opportunity. Lockheed Northwest, to their credit, has done enough here thus far to be able to limit really the Tigers' opportunities within that 18 yard box. Again, had a goal wiped off the board. About 10 minutes ago. Due to an offside, Zoe Mahoney is back in for Waukee Northwest. Both of these teams very deep. So it's a luxury to have many players to utilize. And much to the dismay of the Valley faithful here in attendance, a late foul called. There along the touch line, sets up a long free kick here for the Waukee Northwest Wolves, number three in class 3A. Valley trying to escape, but it remains with the Wolves. Strong throw in there from Mahoney. One of her great attributes to play on. Ahead from Gallagher. Gallagher with the goal back in the 30th minute. That her third of the season. Gallagher has now scored a goal in two consecutive matches. Inadvertent shove sets things up once again for Mahoney, who does have the assist for the Wolves' goal. Mahoney left of the box. Boy, in really good position there, but Valley did enough to box out the Wolves there in that attacking third. Approaching six minutes to play in our first half. Valley on their home pitch. Trying to equalize things before heading into the locker room. A good run there along that far end for Pepper Earl, the senior. The first corner kick on the night for the Valley Tigers. So while we talked about Walking Northwest with the majority of their goals being assisted on. Been about the opposite for the Tigers this season. Three assists to their 10 goals. A can tally one here. Spain, the nearest Tiger there. Trying to slip it through. But the Wolves clear it away. But the Tigers will reset there along the back line. And back and forth, like we anticipated, between these west side foes. 
rivalry getting started here tonight. Ava Hall. Not quite there for Lockie, but it allows an opportunity for the Tigers. Turn around strong. Shot but Spawn was there to be able to come away with the save. Tremendous effort with the quick turn and a strong enough strike. Sense of urgency here from the Tigers late in this first half. Meanwhile, the physicality continuing to ramp up as well. Here's the feeling how process is all but over. Mahoney playing a little bit further up there in the midfield. It's knocked out of play. Carly Boatman back in for Waukee Northwest. Checking out, I believe, is Vandekrol for the Wolves. We're up 1-0. But the Tigers have been pushing the tempo here ever since the 30-minute mark. Calling for it is Mahoney. Mahoney trying to break away from two Tigers. It stays in play and it will remain with the Wolves. Such a tough assignment for the back line is Mahoney. Mahoney looking for the crosser. That was Elchis there along that far side for the Wolves. Team Northwest. Now in the 18. Anna Spain. Keeping her balance. And knocking it away. So out of play, throw in here for Joaquin Northwest. That was Reese Roker, the freshman. Back with Zoe Mahoney. Nestled in the corner is studying for Joaquin Northwest. But once again, here in the half of the Tigers, Joaquin Northwest. Applying some late half pressure. Here is Mahoney cutting through, trying to make another cut. But the Tigers had that wrapped up fairly well. Samantha Elchis. And that is going to be a foul on Valley. That will go against Grace Olson. So a precarious situation here for Valley defensively as we have less than a minute to play here in this opening half for Joaquin Northwest. Trying to add an insurance goal. Booted. And a good pass the keeper. A phenomenal strike by the Wolves. Right on the money. Could not place that any better. So Waukee Northwest. Both goals coming via a set piece. Take a Rather commanding 2-0 lead here with just over 30 seconds to play. An early statement made 
by the Waukee Northwest Wolves. No longer the new kid on the block. Valley trying to find some late magic here, but running out of time. Final seconds tick away, and it will be the number three team in the state, Waukee Northwest. We'll take a two nil lead at half here at Valley Stadium against number four, West Des Moines Valley. Strong start, strong finish for the Wolves here at Valley Stadium. We'll step aside and take a break. When we come back, we'll recap the first half after this on the Central Iowa Sports Network. For 75 years, Holt Service Trucks have hit the streets of Central Iowa to help customers in need. It might be for plumbing, heating, cooling, a water heater, or the usual repairs and maintenance. We've done that with quality work from quality employees who bring passion and personality to the job. That's the whole difference. It gives me great pride to see how our company has grown from the seeds of success my grandfather planted in 1947. That's why more and more Central Iowans are saying, let Holt handle that. Mornings, they can be hectic. Let's go. So can your car, so to get a free pickup, drop off or delivery. Head over to Honest Wrenches and their loaner vehicles. No extra charge. Find your peace of mind with even more wonderful services. Every vehicle that comes in gets a full visual inspection and a five-year, 50,000-mile warranty. No extra charge. Head on over to Honest Wrenches. No extra charge, and it's how service should be. We all love a good win. However small or ordinary, losing track of time, finding yourself with a few extra dollars in your pocket, soaking up the perfect Iowa day. These are the everyday delights and small victories that make us smile. These are the moments that connect us all as Iowans. And these are the moments that, more often than not, start with Iowa's farm families and the corn they're growing. Because when corn grows Iowa, Iowans win. When you need to conquer the drifts on your property, get the job done your way. The Western Defender Compact Snowplow. All the professional grade features in just the right size for your mid-sized pickup or SUV. Easy to attach and easy to use. Get the performance to plow like this and finish like this. Western, more jobs done faster. Visit Truck Equipment Inc. today at truckequipmentinc.com. The Armin certified used vehicles aren't the same as the rest. Every DeArmond certified vehicle receives a 175 point inspection and comes with a 12 month, 12,000 mile bumper to bumper warranty, a two year, 100,000 mile powertrain warranty, and DeArmond Care. Wheel, dent, windshield repair, repel paint and windshield protection, and a full tank of fuel. Buy with confidence, knowing you made a wise decision with DeArmond certified. Find DeArmond certified used vehicles at DeArmondAuto.com. A commanding 2-0 lead at halftime for the number three team in Class 3A against the number four team in 3A. Waukee Northwest on top of Valley here at Valley Stadium after one half of play, 2-0. Alongside our crew here tonight, I'm Hunter Phillips, and now let's look at what transpired there in that first half. And again, it was a strong start and a strong finish for Waukee Northwest there in the 30th minute. Off a set piece, that corner kick from Mahoney, slipping through from the back was Natalie Gallagher to be able to put the Wolves up early. But then Valley, they kept on applying the pressure as well, and a bang, bang play, an offside called here. That was gonna tie things up, but instead, as you saw there in the center of the screen, the official wiping that one away. Waukee Northwest, they decided late in the first half with less than a minute to play. You know what, we might as well tally another one here. And just a phenomenal strike there from 25 yards out. Anderson doing all that she could. But Waukee Northwest flexing here after one half of action here at Valley Stadium. They're up 2-0 on the Valley Tigers. We'll go ahead and take a break. When we come back, we'll continue to get you ready for the second half here in West Des Moines on CISN.TV.
1,300 vehicles on WaukeeChevy.com. Schottenkirk Chevy Waukee. If we don't have it, you can build it. Newly expanded service department means we're hiring. See the openings on WaukeeChevy.com. Schottenkirk Chevy Waukee. WaukeeChevy.com. We are. We are. We are so much more than an energy company. We are connectors, community protectors, and clean energy leaders. We are job creators, friends and neighbors, stewards of your dollars and savings. Yes, we. We. We are so much more. We are the energy behind your everyday. And we are obsessively, relentlessly at your service. I'm off to college. Oh, rat. Hi, Joe the Car Guy with a reminder. Before you send your kids off to school, set up an appointment with Westside Auto. We check everything from tires to belts, fluids, hoses, wipers, and lights. 44 inspection points to help prevent that oh rats moment for your students. Call us today to set up your appointment. We'll have your kids off to school saying, For the best, head west. Westside Auto. Ever have one of those awkward moments when a business disappointed you? You got ripped off? Didn't get what you expected? The Better Business Bureau can help you avoid these uncomfortable situations. BBB accredited businesses are honest, ethical, and reviewed annually by the BBB. Don't experience another awkward moment with a bad business. Trust the ones that operate with integrity. Look for the BBB seal. It's the sign of a better business. And find a better business anytime at BBB.org. We all love a good win. However small or ordinary, losing track of time finding yourself with a few extra dollars in your pocket, soaking up the perfect Iowa day. These are the everyday delights and small victories that make us smile. These are the moments that connect us all as Iowans. And these are the moments that, more often than not, start with Iowa's farm families and the corn they're growing. Because when corn grows Iowa, Iowans win. We are. We are. We are so much more than an energy company. We are connectors, community protectors, and clean energy leaders. We are job creators, friends and neighbors, stewards of your dollars and savings. Yes, we. We. We are so much more. We are the energy behind your everyday. And we are obsessively, relentlessly at your service. For 75 years, Holt Service Trucks have hit the streets of Central Iowa to help customers in need. It might be for plumbing, heating, cooling, a water heater, or the usual repairs and maintenance. We've done that with quality work from quality employees who bring passion and personality to the job. That's the whole difference. It gives me great pride to see how our company has grown from the seeds of success my grandfather planted in 1947. That's why more and more Central Iowans are saying, let Holt handle that. 1,300 vehicles on WaukeeChevy.com. Schottenkirk Chevy Waukee. If we don't have it, you can build it. Newly expanded service department means we're hiring. See the openings on WaukeeChevy.com. Schottenkirk Chevy Waukee. WaukeeChevy.com. Ever have one of those awkward moments when a business disappointed you? You got ripped off? Didn't get what you expected? The Better Business Bureau can help you avoid these uncomfortable situations. BBB accredited businesses are honest, ethical, and reviewed annually by the BBB. Don't experience another awkward moment with a bad business. Trust the ones that operate with integrity. Look for the BBB seal. It's the sign of a better business. And find a better business anytime at BBB.org. Free Godfather's Pizza begins with the download. Order through my new online ordering app and start earning free pizza and sides. It's easy. Download the Godfather's Pizza online ordering app today. Do it.
almost ready to get the second half underway here at Valley Stadium. The lights completely illuminating the all turf pitch here in West Des Moines. 2 0, Joaquin Northwest takes a commanding lead into the second half against the Valley Tigers. And while we do have a brief break in the action, I wanted to go over the Class 3A rankings that were sent out last Thursday. will be updated here in a couple days' time. Ankeny Centennial, they remain the top team in the state. And that game also taking place here on CISN.TV. I believe that's a match in which may have gone final already. Our last check was 1-0, Ankeny Centennial leading Dallin Catholic, who is number seven in the state. Meanwhile, Ankeny, they lost 1-0 at number nine, Johnston, yesterday. Linmar, they are taking on Cedar Falls tonight. Pleasant Valley is at number 10, Bettendorf, on Thursday. Meanwhile, Muscatine tonight taking on Davenport North. And that rounds out all the top 10 action as we are back in full swing here at Valley Stadium. It's been the Zoe Mahoney show here in West Des Moines. Had an assist on the first goal and then an absolute missile there off a free kick from 25 yards out. Again, listed as a defender, but she can absolutely bend it with the best. Once again, Valley is in their home. Black and orange kits, orange numerals and lettering and white trim. While Waukee Northwest in the road, all whites with light blue numerals and lettering and trim. Knew that something was gonna have to give here in this matchup. Both teams undefeated. Both teams with high aspirations. Come postseason time. They are slow to get up for Joaquin Northwest, that is Taryn Hankey, the junior. So goals in the 30th and 45th minutes for Joaquin Northwest has them at the score that we're at right now. But Valley, you could say, really held the majority of the possession there in the first half, but just could not capitalize, did have a goal that was and right there in the scorer's box that was wiped away due to an offside. But if there's any team that can respond from a 2-0 deficit, it is Valley. Granted, they do not see themselves in this position very often. The Tigers wanted the foul there at midfield. J.C. Lockie for Valley. To the middle for Fanter. Had a shot there in the first half. One of four unofficially for the Tigers in the first. Had one corner kick, meanwhile, for Waukee Northwest. Three shots unofficially, two corner kicks. And then one save for Victoria Spawn, who entered the night with 13 on the season. Very efficient was Waukee Northwest. That's been their MO, a team that really values the ball, values the possession and how they are able to share it. The Tigers, Spawn, went off of her hands. Another crewer there, staying in front. Did it get past? Yes, it did. And Fowley, hold on a minute here. Boy, another goal is going to be wiped away here for Fowley. Let's take a better look at it. Spawn. I believe they're saying that was an offside. I believe that was Taylor Chapman that was there for the Tigers. But either way, two goals tonight that have come right there, right in front of the keeper. Uh, unfortunately, for Valley fans, gets 
taken away due to an offside. So once again, the Wolves can breathe a sigh of relief. Here's we are just over 10 minutes into, or just under 10 minutes into this second half. Here is Lydia Anderson for the Tigers. Senior keeper. Only allowed one goal prior to tonight's match. Tigers have no choice but to roll that one towards the far side. Boy, this match has had so many twists and turns here throughout the course of the evening, and there's still plenty of time left. So Valley trying to respond here early in the second half. This is part of a tough part of the schedule for Valley. Later on this week, they will be at Ankeny Centennial. And then we'll have back-to-back -back home matches against Urbandale and Johnston next week before traveling out to Sioux City for a doubleheader against Bishop Heelan and Sioux City North there on April 22nd. So a loaded schedule here upcoming for Valley. But the task at hand is trying to get this thing back to even. Waukee off the throw in. There for Waukee Northwest is Hanky. It's hit out of play by Mahoney. She has been the conductor here this season, but especially tonight. LeVan from the back for the Wolves. Great display of defense. That was Burton for Valley. Spain was there in the center. Wolves trying to keep it from going out on their own in the end line, but unable to do so. Will set up the second corner kick on the night for the Tigers. Sharp, Spain. Been on the receiving end of both of those tries from the corner. But maybe just a little too much pace on at that time. So Waukee Northwest quickly back with it after the infraction. Meanwhile, for Joaquin Northwest, going back to their schedule, they will take on their crosstown rival, Joaquin, next Tuesday. So they will have a week's time to be able to rest and prepare for that big showdown. And then at number two, Ankeny, again, fell earlier this week to Johnston in a tight affair, 1-0. And at Urbandale on May 2nd as we flip the calendar into May. And their first home match again, not coming until May 12th. We'll take on Ankeny Centennial. The 
wind slowly starting to die down here at Valley Stadium. Still a bit of a breeze here. Playing into the wind where the Tigers off their second corner kick here of the second half. Nothing going for Valley. So our first substitution here in the half for Waukee Northwest will be Josie Vanderkrall, the junior. Playing it from the back is Macy Davis. Davis was also a second team All-State selection last year. For the IGCA. Trying to force it to the middle, Spain. Unable to retrieve it. I think the Valley bench wanted a handball, but instead, Joaquin Northwest. Up two goals, looking to tack on more. Nothing going for Boatman. Spain. And now here's Lockie. Valley had numbers here along the near flank. Ball continuing to bounce and play. Now the Tigers will reset. Spawn will charge up to retrieve it. So at first touch, we were just under 80 degrees. It's dipped down to 70 degrees. Wind's still blowing just a bit again, right at around 11 miles an hour. But for early April, could not ask for better conditions here tonight. Boatman. And she has really been forcing the back lines up her hand here in the second half. Two new Tigers check in. Ava Stemler and Finley Rivera. Valley in a position where they don't find themselves very often. Down 2-0 here in the second half. Tigers looking to work quickly here. From the back. And Waukee Northwest game has been so crisp on their counters. We can continue to hear the Valley bench just display their frustration and maybe the inconsistency of calls tonight. Here is Spain. Oh, it was a beautiful ball, but Waukee Northwest knocks it. Out of play. Boatman fires it in. There from the center, it's Gallagher. Had the first goal on the night for the Wolves. Oh, and there's a tough collision. And this is going to set up a free kick here for the Wolves. That's how they were able to get their second goal of the match. In the latter portion of the first half with just a mere 36 seconds remaining. And it will be Mahoney sharply there, but Anderson getting her mitts on it. Again, with that left-footed strike as well. Makes her such a, a versatile weapon out there for Waukee Northwest. 
showing why, again, she is one of the best in the state. Meanwhile, for the Valley Tigers, the last time they lost a regular season match, you have to go to April 13th of 2021 when they fell to Ankeny Centennial right here at Valley Stadium. So it has been a long time since the Tigers have fallen short in a regular season match. Shot and goal for Joaquin Northwest. Zoe Mahoney once again. Putting the state on notice. This time with the right, look at that. Tigers did not have an answer. Mahoney can play just about anywhere out there on the pitch. Just a fantastic start to the season for the senior who came into the match as the top goal scorer for the Wolves. With six goals, you can add two to that tally tonight with eight. And now just like that, three nil. Advantage for the Joaquin Northwest Wolves. So no doubt for Valley. Knew that they had a tough customer coming into their home pitch tonight. The Joaquin Northwest just making one statement after another here in this one. But still plenty of time for Valley to try to muster something back. Corner here for the Wolves. Their third corner kick of the night. And it goes to the side of the net. And out of play. So the last time that Valley gave up multiple goals in a match have to go back to their season opener last year against Ames. March 29th of 2022, they won that match 3-2. But otherwise, Valley has either given up one goal or earned the clean sheet. But Joaquin Northwest has certainly flipped the script on the Tigers here tonight. Valley searching for something here. Again, they have had a couple of good opportunities right in front of the net, but unfortunately for Valley, two goals being wiped off due to an offside. And Mahoney is going to be called for a foul. They're on Joaquin Northwest. Sending that upfield is Stemler. Earl. There's Mahoney right there. Having to chase it down is Ava Hall. Walking Northwest applying pressure on Anderson. And that one will go out of play. So that will allow a substitution. Elena Stedding in for Waukee Northwest. Looks like 
Looks like Samantha Elchis will be the one checking out for the Wolves. So going back even a little bit further, the last time that Valley allowed more than two goals was against a program not even here in the state of Iowa, Whitefish Bay of Wisconsin. It was a 3-0 loss for the Tigers back on April 26th of 2019. So Waukee Northwest, as of right now, doing what nobody has been able to do in the state here in the last handful of years. Valley trying to work, though. Zoe Fanter. Now Mahoney with two goals on the night and an assist. Long ball ahead. Waukee Northwest has really limited the quality touches for the Tigers here thus far. We'll go back to the Wolves. Natalie Gallagher back in for Waukee Northwest. Gallagher got the night started for the Wolves. I've not been looking back ever since, despite some valiant pushes and counters from the Tigers. Just the smallest lack of execution has been the difference. Mahoney picks it off. And immediately two have to converge on the senior who is no doubt making a case for player of the year here in the state, here in the early going. So both teams with a number of student athletes that will be playing collegiately. And there is that acrobatic throw in that we've been waiting for here from Mahoney. And you could just tell that number 19 is something special. Keeping the Tigers at bay, not knowing how to approach it defensively. Even the student section for Valley having a little fun with the senior. They want to see it again. Again, the throw-ins have been effective as they are slowly but surely making their way down. So the Wolves had it with Elchis. We'll remain with Waukee Northwest, but Going back to the amount of student athletes that will be taking their talents to the next level, we've talked about the likes of Mahoney, Gallagher, Levine, and Spawn, but Elena studying another member for Waukee Northwest that will go on to play collegiately at Iowa Western Community College out in Council Bluffs. But then for Valley, absolutely loaded. Rachel Hansen haven't really called her name all that often here tonight, but she'll be playing at Wyoming. She's playing out in Laramie. Top goal scorer for the Tigers as a corner kick will be upcoming here for Waukee Northwest. Elon Witt, Minnesota State Mankato commit, so she will join Anna Van Weingarten amongst a slew of Iowa prep players that have made their way to Mankato. Cleared by the Tigers. Fourth corner kick of the match for Waukee Northwest. Continuing to bring the heat. Trying to slip it there to the front. 
Well, it's Mahoney, but Anderson right there. Allie Hoffa, another senior for the Tigers. Great goal scorer. She'll be going to Simpson College, as will Pepper Earl. Anna Spain and Zoe Fancher each going to St. Cloud State. Ava Stemmler will be going to Luther College. Morale Boucher will be going to Loris College. And then finally, Mallory Goldstein will be attending Rhodes College in Memphis, Tennessee to play her collegiate soccer. Just amazing, up and down both rosters, just how much talent specifically for soccer there is. And Colleges all over the state and in the Midwest have taken notice. Carly Boatman and Elena Witt both set to enter the match for Waukee Northwest. J.C. Waukee will be in for Valley. Well, as we touched on here in just three days, we'll have to travel to the north part of the Metro to take on a pretty darn good Ankeny Centennial team. And number one in the state. But then we'll be back at home. Also coming back in for Waukee Northwest is Josie Vandekroll. 15 and a half minutes remaining here in what was billed as the marquee matchup here in the early portion of the Iowa girls high school soccer season has not disappointed. And the first ever meeting between these two programs again did not face one another last year. Tony Gabriel's got his team rolling right now. Help build. Then Waukee has one consolidated school to successful seasons. Was the head coach there from 2012 to 2019. There was no season in 2020. And has 123 victories to his name, 20 and three record since taking over at Waukee Northwest. And some signature victories here in the start of this program. Probably none bigger than this one as the Tigers continue to try to get on the scoreboard and spawn off the hop was able to scoop in the save. taken by Zoe Fanter. Hasn't scored a goal since notching two in that win against Bettendorf early on in the campaign. Tangled up. Will be Valley Ball here with 13 and a half minutes remaining. Played around the volley, Spain. Here's Fanter. That will actually set up a penalty, or excuse me, a free kick here for Valley off of the penalty by Joaquin Northwest. So Valley trying to get on the board here and in prime position to do so. Three personnel wall on top of the 18 yard box for Waukee Northwest. They spread out, just not quite the execution there. So 
subs coming in for both teams. Ava Stemler back in for Valley. Two new players back in for Waukee Northwest, one of them being Carly Boatman. And if you do not know the name Zoe Mahoney, you better know by now that she is a force to be reckoned with, not only as a distributor, a creator, but also as a goal scorer. Has had a hand in all of the scoring for the Wolves tonight, two goals and an assist. Big-time players making big-time plays. For Waukee Northwest, also limiting the touches for Rachel Hansen and others. For Valley. A team that has never really had a shortage of very good goal scorers throughout its program's history. From the corner. So will be a goal kick here for Waukee Northwest. 10 minutes away from what would no doubt be a monumental victory for this program here early in the season. Have all the ingredients of a team that is going to continue to make noise throughout this season. Foul on Valley gives it back to the Wolves. In their first season as a program last year, 16 and three, got a taste of what it was like to play at County. But now looking to build off of that this year. This is a huge step in the right direction. The ball will go back to Valley. Meanwhile, for the Tigers, no time again to be able to reflect on this one. Obviously, learning moments for sure, but have to be ready for another tough test that awaits. And sometimes having that match two, three days after an uncharacteristic outing what the doctor ordered to be able to get back on track. Mahoney making things all too difficult there for Valley's Rachel Hansen. Spawn. Wasn't sure about it the first time, but second time, had no choice but to brush it there to the end line. Valley continuing to fight here late in this one. It will be Ava Stemler who has an assist on the season. A little breeze to her back. Ball still alive. A good chance there from the center. And it got deflected out and another try here for Valley. Probably their best look off a corner kick. Off the rebound, it got pushed back. Tigers trying to duplicate that. It's time for a different result, but it doesn't go for Anna Spain.
Nice play by the back line. Spain. Hung up in the air, stays in play. Tigers will toss this one in. So again for Valley, be their first regular season loss in two years. First time since 2019, conceding more than two goals. Just a rarefied position for this program. We'll look to bounce back. And we'll drop to three and one while Waukee Northwest will improve their record to five and oh. And all of their wins have come against top 10 competition. Not just here from Central Iowa, but also in Eastern Iowa as well. Taking part in that Ankeny and Centennial Crosstown Soccer Invitational. So the body of work, no doubt, has been impressive so far for Joaquin Northwest. These two teams playing the best of the best. And when they both meet on the same night, you know that you're going to have some fireworks. All the fireworks have been shot out by Joaquin Northwest here on the road. it is steady. Boatman will throw it in for Waukee Northwest. So for the Wolves, can a goal in the 30th minute, 45th minute, and in the 65th minute essentially put this one on ice. Wolves trying to milk down as much clock as possible here. With four minutes and some change left. saying not so fast there for the Wolves as the Tigers get it back. Boatman knocked away by Valley. Valley with a good chase there. Spawn and that was Spain charging up for Valley. The middle, it's Olsen. Trying to carve in. Fancher. Shot got deflected. Spain in a good spot. Nice dish out there behind, but not enough footing on that ball. Spain doing everything. She could there, occupying three defenders with her. So again, Valley has Ankeny Centennial coming up. They won 1 0 at home against Dowling Catholic, the number seven team in the state. See what kind of shifting there is in the IGH SAU rankings that will be released on Thursday. Certainly, Waukee Northwest propelled themselves to a very good position. But the 
top 10 in the state is absolutely loaded. Anybody on any given night can make something happen. That's what Elon Litt is trying to do for the Tigers here of late. Beautifully played ahead, Fanter. Phenomenal defense by the Wolves. Not only keep that one in play, but for Spawn to be able to come up with it. That was Reese Rocher, Rodiger rather, that just a freshman kept that one alive. It's the little plays like that that can separate yourselves. So closing in on our final minute here at Valley Stadium. Two top five teams, two undefeated teams, two programs that made it to state last year meeting for the first time. Something was gonna have to give a strong start and strong finish to the first half. It was really enough for Joaquin Northwest who put on the finishing touches here midway through the second half. So the Wolves jump to 5-0 and oh, while the Tigers drop to 3-1. and one. Final set of seconds here. Ball will just be dribbled around for the Wolves. And they will walk out of Valley Stadium with a clean sheet and another top 10 win, a top five win. Waukee Northwest with an incredible statement defeats Valley 3-0 here under the lights at Valley Stadium. So an incredible night of soccer comes to a close here in West Des Moines. We'll take one final break. When we come back, we'll recap the night and close out our broadcast here from West Des Moines on CISN.TV. 1,300 vehicles on WaukeeChevy.com. Schottenkirk Chevy Waukee. If we don't have it, you can build it. Newly expanded service department means we're hiring. See the openings on WaukeeChevy.com. Schottenkirk Chevy Waukee. WaukeeChevy.com. Ever have one of those awkward moments when a business disappointed you? You got ripped off? Didn't get what you expected? The Better Business Bureau can help you avoid these uncomfortable situations. BBB accredited businesses are honest, ethical, and reviewed annually by the BBB. Don't experience another awkward moment with a bad business. Trust the ones that operate with integrity. Look for the BBB seal. It's the sign of a better business. And find a better business anytime at BBB.org. Free Godfather's Pizza begins with the download. Order through my new online ordering app and start earning free pizza and sides. It's easy. Download the Godfather's Pizza online ordering app today. Do it. Howling in the night are the Waukee Northwest Wolves. 3-0. They defeat number four, West Des Moines Valley, on their home pitch. What was just an absolute clinic put on by the Wolves, the number three team in the state. And let's take a look at the scoring tonight by Joaquin Northwest in the 30th minute. Mahoney off the corner kick, it got cleared initially, but went straight up in the air and Gallagher was able to swoop in and knock it past the keeper Anderson. And then late in the first half, how about this one folks? Absolute beauty there in the upper 94. Zoe Mahoney, but she wasn't done yet. Blistering ball sent by Anderson, now has eight goals on the season, has scored in every match for this Waukee Northwest squad who will, again, stay undefeated at 5-0. and They will play at Waukee next week while the Valley Tigers pick up the pieces and they will 
head to Ankeny Centennial for a tough one later on here this week. So again, 3-0 our final score here at Valley Stadium, Joaquin Northwest defeating the Valley Tigers for our entire crew, led by our producer Randy Nielsen and our camera operator Jose Guzman. I'm Hunter Phillips signing off from Valley Stadium in West Des Moines, and you have been watching Iowa High School Girls Soccer on the Central Iowa Sports Network.